Summer in Japan means fireworks lighting up the night sky. Japan loves fireworks. Every year, it puts on close to 5,000 fireworks displays. But not all fireworks shoot into the sky. There are sparklers and other fireworks that people can enjoy at home. No Japanese summer feels complete without fireworks. This time on Japanology Plus, our theme is fireworks and their essential place in Japanese summer fun. Hello and welcome to Japanology Plus, I'm Peter Barakan. Today I'm in a place called Miyama, which is in Fukuoka Prefecture in the southern island of Kyushu. And tonight there's going to be a fireworks display here. Now to me, growing up in England, fireworks are something that happened on November the 5th. I think in most countries too, firework displays tend to be on either particular dates or on special occasions. But in Japan, if you want to see a fireworks display, you can go somewhere in the country just about any day in July and August, and you will find one. On today's program, we're going to take a look at why it is that fireworks displays are so associated with Japan's hot summer months. The Japanese summer is hot and humid. Even at night, big cities like Tokyo and Osaka tend to be very warm and sticky. Summer weather can be exhausting. Fireworks displays help people to beat the heat at this time of year. In July and August, there is a display almost every day somewhere in Japan. One of Tokyo's three biggest displays is the Sumido River Fireworks Festival. Held each summer and dating back centuries, it draws almost a million spectators. People stake out prime viewing spots in the area hours in advance. During the 90-minute display, about 20,000 fireworks are launched. Even the smallest cost a few thousand yen, the largest millions of yen. A number of companies take part in the bigger displays. Each one strives to stand out for the beauty and impact of its fireworks. Other expenses for putting on fireworks besides the pyrotechnics include security, portable toilets, tents, and so on. Total budgets can reach 150 million yen. Fireworks are a fixture of summer in Japan. Displays large and small are held all over the country. This time on Japanology Plus, our guest is Takako Ishii, a fireworks lover who knows how to get the most out of this popular tradition. She attends more than 60 displays a year. Will this do? Looks great on you. It's interesting, I mean, this kind of Japanese people have a uniform for every activity. You'll see young women wearing yukata quite often these days. And when you see them, it's like, ah, maybe there's a fireworks display on somewhere today. Yukata is the outfit for fireworks, recently for men too. For coming of age days and graduations, people wear particular kinds of formal kimono. But there are very few other occasions where people wear traditional clothing. Yukata are popular because they're informal. You can wear them casually, and they offer a nostalgic appeal. So, where are we off to? I wish I could say we're off to see fireworks, but it's still the middle of the day, so we'll make another stop first. Okay. Let's go. This way. Along with the fireworks used in displays, there are ones for home use, and that's what they make in this workshop. 
This company specializes in making home use fireworks, mostly for holding in the hand or placing on the ground. All are handmade by artisans. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Wow. These are handheld fireworks. You, you, you just hold that like that? Okay. You can think of this as the granddaddy of Japanese fireworks. It recreates what the earliest fireworks were like. Let's see what the firework does. In centuries past, there was only one color of firework, a reddish orange. This product recreates that traditional color. Old ukiyo-e woodblock prints display this reddish orange color. Let's look at some other home use fireworks. This one is modeled on Mount Fuji. It starts with an eruption of white flame, then turns red. The color and size of the flames express the power of a volcano. Here's one with a whale motif. The firework represents the spouting of a whale's blowhole in a blue shade that evokes the ocean. And these are the iconic handheld fireworks of Japan. Sparklers. They have been universally popular for centuries. Okay, what's the difference between the two types then? How you hold them, right? Yes. You hold these pointing upwards. Really? The flame goes upwards like an incense stick. Wow. These point down. These ones look very distinctly Japanese to me. Oh, okay. Flowers. Oh, these are beautiful. Oh, my God, look at that. Oh, wow, 40 of them for 10,000 yen. That's quite a lot of money. Why so expensive? I mean, I can tell they're very beautiful, but even so, it does seem quite a lot. Well, the paper is traditional. It is handmade locally. Mm. Mm. And they're colored with natural plant dyes from flowers and so on. Oh, oh, oh. Also, the powder is made in Miyazaki. What difference does that make to the, the end result? The oh. colour and the sound, they're very different. OK. I, I'm interested to see how they're made, actually. Is it possible to take a look? Yes, I can show you some simple oh. examples. Come this way. OK. This is fun. Mm. First, you take a slip of paper. Mm. The powder charge is 0 0.08 grams. Wow. If it's off by even 1%, it won't ignite properly, oh. so it has to be precise. Mm. It needs to be rolled just mm. right, not too loose or too tight. Mm. Well, and in the process, it also makes a very nice pattern. <laughs> This shop has an area where you can try out fireworks. West Japan and East Japan sparklers, for example. The way these East Japan sparklers burn in particular is seen as a metaphor for the stages on our journey through life. Okay. Oh, there we go. So you hold this like that. It starts like a bud. That's infancy. Yes, a new life is born. Next, it sparks up more for the peony stage. Oh, so it sparks again. OK. That's youth. Oh, that's pretty. The most vigorous stage is pine needles, the prime of life. Mm. Then chrysanthemum shedding petals. Oh. That's old age. Finally, it sputters before it goes out. A long life. Uh -oh. 
<laughs> Very long. <laughs> now for the West Japan sparklers. They are held pointing up. This is the Western ones. Unlike the East Japan kind, these sparklers burn best with a slight breeze. When Peter blows on his sparkler, sparks flare up. Wow, it lasted long. That one went down quite a long way, didn't it? <laughs> When I was a girl, we always started with the most impressive fireworks. We'd go through them all, and the sparklers would come last. The Japanese tradition is to huddle in a circle, shoulder to shoulder. You shield the fireworks from the wind. That's the way to enjoy them. In Japan, home fireworks have long been sold in many places in the summer. You see children and parents playing with fireworks outside their homes. Today, as ever, fireworks are among the highlights of summer for children in Japan. I'm Matt Alt, and this is Plus One. I'm at Kamakura Station, because tonight is the 69th annual Kamakura fireworks display. It's put on every year, and it attracts over 150,000 fans of fireworks. Now, as you might imagine, it takes a lot of preparation and a lot of volunteer work. So let's go behind the scenes to see what it takes to keep a fireworks event of this size running smoothly. Kamakura fireworks display is held at the seaside, 1.5 kilometers from the station. On the day of the event, roads are closed in the area to prevent traffic jams. So most spectators come by train to Kamakura station and then walk about 20 minutes to the sea. Here's the beach that hosts the Kamakura fireworks display. There are plenty of beachgoers, but also unattended blankets and sheets. Excuse me, what are you doing here? Staking out a spot for the fireworks. There are no restrictions on claiming space. Today, people started mid-morning. Well, here I am on the beach where most of the people will gather to watch the festivities. It's only 11.30 in the morning. We have about eight hours to go before the first fireworks launch, but already preparations have begun. For instance, this bank of chemical toilets they've installed. Spectators begin to arrive. More people means more mobile phone connections. Mobile signal towers are brought in to keep lines of communication open. 2 p.m. Fireworks for this event are launched from floats offshore. The exact spot is decided on the day by the organizers, based on weather reports. Excuse me, what do you look for in determining the proper positioning? This location is between Yuigahama and Zaimokuza, the two main beaches. We try to get the floats right in the middle. Now it's 4 p.m. A large number of people have assembled at a facility run by Kamakura City Hall. They are all volunteers. In fact, around 100 volunteers are needed for a successful fireworks display. Looks like this group of volunteers is heading back beachside, so I'm going to tag along. They head for the road between the station and the beach. What are they handing out? Hi there, konnichiwa. What are you doing? 
handing out plastic bags for people to use to separate their trash. Good for you. Go kill some of this. Thanks. Oh, thank you. <laughs> At this so-called clean station, trash bags are handed out to spectators on their way to the fireworks. The bags can be dropped off on their way back. This helps to keep litter off the beach. 5 p.m. Spectators are beginning to arrive at Kamakura Station in droves. Well, we're back at Kamakura Station, and as you can see, things have changed since this morning. Huge numbers of people are pouring in, and staff are guiding them to where the fireworks are going to be held. Why do you like fireworks? What's cool about fireworks to you? They're just so pretty. Do you come here every year? We came last year. Why are you dressed in yukata? That's what you wear to fireworks. It's so crowded. Do you mind the crowds? Not really. What is it about Japanese fireworks that you like? Well, um, they're really beautiful. Um, they're skill skillfully created and they're, like choreographed really well. So it's so crowded. Do you mind these crowds? I think it's part of the festive atmosphere. What do you like about Japanese fireworks? It's the play of light against dark. That's what I find so appealing. Food stalls line the route from the station to the beach, adding to the festive atmosphere. You know, what's interesting here is how strictly they control not only car traffic, but foot traffic. Depending on how crowded the sidewalks get, they'll shunt people over to one side or the other. Here they're telling people to go over to the left side. 7 p.m., 20 minutes to go before the fireworks start. The beach is packed solid with spectators. At 7.20, the first of 2,500 fireworks is launched. There are shells that burst high in the sky and others that paint half circles on the horizon. 30 minutes after the display begins, spectators are still pouring onto the beach. Whoa. Whoa. At 8.10 comes the grand finale. After this, roughly 150,000 people head back to the train station at the same time. About 1,000 police and security staff are needed for the event. They direct the crowd back towards the station. How was tonight's fireworks? Awesome! Awesome! They're beautiful when they explode, but then there is that melancholy moment as they fade. I just love that. At the clean station, volunteers collect the trash bags spectators are carrying back from the beach. The trash is carefully separated. Kamakura station is jam-packed. So even Japan's incredibly efficient train system has a hard time handling this many people. So they've actually put restrictions on the number of people that can enter the station at any given time. We're being kept in a little holding area here. It sounds like the station is really crowded. Are you going to be OK getting home? I'm just a bit anxious. Are you going to come next year? It was gorgeous, so maybe. It's so crowded. Why did you come? Oh, it's definitely worth seeing. Despite the crowds, everything is very orderly. A hallmark of Japan's fireworks displays. 
Next time you're in Japan and it's the summer months, keep an eye open for fireworks festivals like this one. Especially if you don't mind sharing your personal space with your fellow human beings. See you next time. There is a historical context for Japan's summer love affair with fireworks. Japanese fireworks can be traced to the gunpowder that came to Japan with firearms in the 16th century. Gunpowder was used to make signal flares in battle. The idea of putting on entertaining displays came about a century later. It is said that Shogun Tokugawa Ieyasu was the first person in Japan to see fireworks when an English envoy put on a display in 1613. The resulting fad for fireworks among the aristocracy led to regular events featuring fireworks. This gave the public at large their first glimpse of pyrotechnics. Firework sellers and pyrotechnicians began to appear. But after fireworks were blamed for starting fires, the government banned them in built-up areas. The use of fireworks was confined to the rivers. In 1732, famine and epidemics claimed many lives across Japan. A decision was made to hold a fireworks display as a requiem for those who had died. Japan already had a custom of summer offerings to the souls of the dead. Now, a version of that custom featuring fireworks was introduced on the Sumida River. This paved the way for fireworks displays to be held as requiems in other parts of Japan. And soon, fireworks were a fixture of the Japanese summer. So this is the site, and it's a nice, sizable river here as well. It's, it's interesting that a lot of fireworks displays tend to take place by the side of a river, don't they? Yes, lots of people can fit in the space here, so it's a good place for launching fireworks. Plus, there are no buildings around. Oh, oh. So it's what, it's about six o'clock now. It doesn't start till eight o'clock. So There's still two hours to go, but obviously people are eager to get a place to get a good view. There is no admission cost, so everyone competes for the best places, close to the fireworks. Spectators bring all kinds of supplies with them. Oh. What time did you get here today? Before six. Oh, do you come every year? We came last year and had fun. So this year, I took the day off to come back. The whole family. Right. Oh. Hello. <laughs> Do you come to this fireworks display every year? Yes. I see you're, you're both wearing yukata. You, you always do that? It's our first date, actually. It's your first date? Oh, <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> Meanwhile, people with cameras are lined up on top of the embankment. Uh, do you come here every year? Yes. Is, this, is there anything special about this display? It's kind of a wide vision display, left and right. Panoramic explosions right up close. Very high impact. There are families, couples and photographers all getting ready to enjoy the fireworks in their own different ways. I'm mean, talking to some of these people, they're, you know, going all over the place just to see fireworks displays, which seems pretty unusual to me. What, what do you think it is that people like so much about them? You feel it with your whole body. You get this huge explosion, and your body resonates. It hits your eyes, ears, all the senses. And they're so pretty, so impressive, yet they fade away in moments. Mm, it's a bit like the cherry blossoms. Yes, very much so. Beautiful, but ephemeral. Blossoms fall, fireworks fade away. It's a beautiful sight that vanishes without a trace. I like the purity of the experience. 30 minutes to go until the fireworks. Well, it'll be starting soon. We seem to have a pretty good place here, quite close to where the, the fireworks are going to be going up. 
What's the secret to get the best out of one of these displays? If you go up to high ground while it's light, you can see where they're setting up. So you can work out where to sit. They also provide programs. Oh, they have a program. You can see that some of the fireworks are set to music. If you're not right between the speakers, the sound won't be so good. You need to get right in the middle. That's the key thing. Okay. <laughs> the countdown to the fireworks begins. And the first of 8,000 fireworks are launched. This part of the display is set to music. Japanese fireworks are especially famous for changing color. Watch and you'll see. The color changes. This is the 41st Miyama City Fireworks Festival. It draws about 20,000 spectators each year. Luckily, I've never been in a place where a bomb has gone off, but these things are so loud that you could be forgiven for mistaking one for a bomb or a gun going off, you know. In Japan, we are very fortunate to be able to associate gunpowder with entertainment like this. Hmm. The loud sounds might remind people from other countries of war or exploding bombs. They might find it scary. I hope Japanese fireworks will always be associated with peace. Well, I guess I did get a, at least a little crash course in fireworks. I know a lot more now about them than I did yesterday anyway. So thank you very much for that. And let's just enjoy the display, I think. Thanks a lot. Thank you. It was fun. <laughs>